I have essentially been living in Harmon. Essentially, my life from before your documentary ended with that phone interview. And since then, I have been living by my wits. Two of you, two cameras. I was under the impression that it would only be you and your camera. All right, Victor, duly noted, but you did come to us yes. and request this interview. Yes. And you did request money, which you've been paid. Yes. Per your in insistence, uh, it was just to be me, yes. and I'm not a professional cameraman, so I did bring along a second cameraman uh, to shoot some additional footage so we have something to cut to. Okay, on B-camera? Uh, B-camera set. Okay, okay, here we go. So, Victor, here we are. Well, I must say that I never expected to hear myself called Victor again or to find myself in disguise in front of the camera again. It's now been uh, 11 years uh, since we last conducted that interview. Yes, the Art Bell interview you arranged for me. In May 1997. As the interview progressed, I began to uh, get a different sense, and that was that um, he was scared. I think Victor really is scared. That was a pleasant experience, to say with some sarcasm. Looking back on it now, 11 years later, you didn't want to do it. I did not want to do it on the day that I did it. You and, and that, uh, that rocket man foisted it upon me after we had made an agreement uh, for one on-screen appearance in your little documentary. And then somehow that agreement metastasized into an ongoing series of promotional appearances, which was not part of the agreement. You agreed to do that one phone interview with Art Bell Coast to Coast uh, to promote the video at the time. Which was a live interview, and I had made it abundantly clear that I was not to be put in a position of revealing my whereabouts in a live situation. Uh, again, Victor, with all due respect, you knew that the Art Bell show was live. You say that now, that's not how I remember it, but in any case, it's a thing of the past. Well, in any event, you contacted us for this interview. This is, this situation has not been of my choosing. If I came to you and requested, as you say, I, in fact, I find that characterization insulting. I did not request to give you information. I offered you information. Yes, I did demand payment. Certainly, I demanded that I would not have been given it had I not demanded it. You are the businessmen. You are the filmmakers, the video makers, the documentarians. You and that, that rocket man, you have made whatever profits have been made over the last decade off of the... <laughs> I can't think of a reason why I would want to be giving you information were it not for the money. Certainly, any illusions I had that my information might actually spur the government have been sadly mistaken. It's been 11 years since I brought out that tape. What follow-up has there been? Who among these so-called ufologists, these self-proclaimed investigators, show me one of them that's demanded information about S-4 under the Freedom of Information Act. Show me one of them that has seriously attempted <coughs> to confirm or deny the existence of the alien interview program. All they care about is talking among themselves and making videotapes, making documentaries, promoting themselves. 
Do you at least feel vindicated that no one has conclusively debunked the tape? What the only vindication that I could imagine would be if the government finally revealed all that they know about these aliens. So are you saying that the internet truth seekers are not living up to your expectations? <laughs> that is an understatement. Well, I should say they perhaps are living up to my expectations since my expectations were admittedly low to begin with. All the days in which people uh, took Bob Lazar seriously. And uh, who, who is that person in your, uh, in, in your documentary, that, uh, that Morton character? Sean David Morton. Yes, <laughs> a researcher. What has he discovered to corroborate or debunk the interview since that time? He was more than happy to take it at face value then when you, he too was being paid. I assume you paid him as well as me. All of these people are charlatans. All of these people are at best hobbyists and at worst professional con men. Well, I'm, I'm assuming that you saw, you've seen the finished product. What did you think of Bob Dean's interview, the retired NATO commander? Well, he, he took the video at face value, but that was a case of being correct by accident. What about Rick Baker? Uh, Rick Baker's won Academy Awards. Rick Baker is a professional makeup artist. Artist. <laughs> a makeup businessman. It's in his best interest to say that he can do much better than the real thing. And that other, that other makeup man, the same goes for him. The uh, John Criswell. John Criswell, yes. They both, they, they both were happy to brag that they could create a more realistic alien. Fine, well, where is it? In the Men in Black movies? In that ridiculous alien autopsy footage? Show me a more authentic alien than the one in that interview. By all means, if these makeup people are capable of creating a more realistic alien, <coughs> then show me, compare it, place it before the public. These, these people are show people. Everything for them is hyperbole. My contempt for the viewers of your documentary over the last 11 years knows no bounds. They've been like children, mocking it, or on the other hand, credulously accepting it with no attempt to evaluate the material on its own merits, or to discover any new material to support or debunk it. This is not a joke. This is not a hoax. Certainly I'm staking my reputation on it. If an anonymous individual in a rubber mask could be said to be staking his reputation on anything, I challenged these ufologists to debunk me, discover my identity. <laughs> if, it, if they really believe that the alien interview footage is a hoax, prove it. Show where it was faked. If they believe that the alien in that footage is a puppet, Prove it. Find the puppet maker 